بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليك يا أبا عبد الله Welcome to the program Every Gain Through Hussein where we talk about benefiting and maximizing our potential through Imam Hussein alayhi salam Today we're going to talk about being distinguished in the eyes of God because Imam Hussein alayhi salam was waji We see in uh, for example some of the lines in Ziyarat Ashura, we have uh, Allahumma ja'alni indaka wajihan bil Hussein. Oh Allah, make me illustrious in your sight in the name of Hussein alayhi salam fi dunya wal akhira, in the world and the hereafter. Therefore, being waji, we are asking God to be waji in your sight in the name of Imam Hussein. So we become distinguished, we become valuable, we become of importance through Imam Hussein. As if we can say if Imam Hussein salam wasn't for us, we would lose our value. Therefore, when you look at this word and being distinguished and this concept in the Holy Quran, you see that it's used twice. Once it's used for Prophet Musa salam this way, waji, the Prophet Musa salam in uh, verse 33, 69, is wa kana inda The Prophet Musa salam and he in the sight of Allah was distinguished. Or we have about Prophet Isa alayhi salam, Prophet Jesus 349, 345, that Isa ibn Maryam dunya wal akhirah. That Prophet Isa alayhi salam is distinguished in the world and the hereafter. So we see that being waji is something or being distinguished, first of all, is what the prophets have. And that this is, belongs to Prophet Musa. This belongs to Prophet Isa alayhi salam. And this belongs to Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Or for example, we talk about Imam Mahdi ajallahu ta'ala faja. Aina wajhu Allahi alladhi yatawajjahu ilayhi al-awliya. With waji, which means distinguish, comes from the word waj, which means face. So we can say this, where is the waj, the face of God? Where is the path of God? That they seek that path, they turn towards that path, those that are uh, God's saints or those that are God's friends. So therefore we see that being waji is something that such high prophets are the ulul azm, the, the five main prophets, you see one of the two of them in the Quran, they have are waji, they are distinguished. So very interesting for us that when you look at these uh, du'as that we have, that you wanna be waji, and we're talking about getting every gain from Imam Hussein alayhi salam. When you look at such du'as, how can we become waji? How can, what is the method that we can have uh, to be so distinguished in the sights of God? First of all, how can we even make this du'a? How can we pray to become like Prophet Isa, to become like Prophet Musa, to become like Imam Hussein? Brothers and sisters, we learn that from these ziyarats, we learn that we should ask very important high du'as, maximum level of du'as. Don't limit yourself to very weak du'as, to very um, unimportant du'as. Because Allah is kareem. Allah will give, is generous. And whenever you make small du'as, you're actually making Allah seem as if he's, he's not unable to provide you or give you something. This world is not the world that sometimes when we compare things to this natural world. In this world, you go step by step. Yeah, that's natural. You go step by step. For example, if you don't have a home yet, you buy a small home. Then you buy a smaller home, you sell it, you buy a medium size, then a large size, then extra large, then you supersize it, or you keep going higher and higher and higher. You know, there's no end. But in this world, it's the world of progression, small steps. But when it comes with asking from Allah, who's able to provide anything that we want, and whose mercy and his being generous and generosity fulfills the entire world, we have to have husna then. We have to have a favorable opinion about God, that he will provide as long as your heart is sincere that he doesn't look at what you have, you know, what step, stage you're at. But as long as you're sincere, and you see, for example, of 
Nuhur, one of the companions of uh, Imam Hussein alayhi salam, that he didn't look a lot to say, okay, he's been Yazidi for so long. He's been the, an army, a in general, in the army of Yazid for so long, or what he has been doing. He looks at his heart and he reverses him very fast, very fast when he gets connected to Imam Hussein. So we learn that the system that in, with our relationship with doing du'as is not about how much you have, at what stage you're at, now can you afford it or not. No. You ask for maximum, make me of the highest, make me of the best. So how can we be of the waji? How can we be of the distinguished of Allah? Those that in the day of judgment, they'll come and everybody will say, wow, look at them. MashaAllah, they're great, look at them. There are a few things we can do. One is, how can we be distinguished in this world? Because it's important to have honor, to preserve our honor, to be honorable people in society especially as Muslims, we want to be very honorable people. Two, how can we have that in the hereafter? How can we have it in just in God's eyes? So the first thing, we're going to give a few things that I advise myself and I advise you, brothers and sisters, to be honorable, to be distinguished. One is the way that we carry ourselves. We shouldn't be very silly people. We should joke around, have a sense of humor. But you see someone that carries himself in a professional manner, carries himself in a uh, very respected manner, that person will be waji, that person will be distinguished. Not to fake it, or, but not to, you know, to, do, to be appropriate at all times. You know, who you joke around with, who you're silly with. You know, there's a, sometimes you're dealing with your own kids, your children, you need to play with them. But sometimes you're dealing with an adult, you're dealing with your grandparents, for example. You need to be in, in a very humble way. You need, to, you need to respect them. So the way that we carry ourselves, sisters, and the way you carry yourselves too, to have that obohat, to have that honor, to be distinguished, that they see them, you know, you have a presence to yourself, you know, and you have humility. Brothers, when it comes to the way that you approach the na-mahram, when it comes to the way you, those that are not family members of you, that you are heavy in, in, in a way that uh, people think twice, maybe saying and, and saying, just joking around with you all the time. You know, so you, there needs to be a balance of humor in a way that, especially our youth, the way we carry ourselves. Two, having responsibilities. The more responsibilities you have at your home, especially the youth, the more you'll be distinguished, the more you'll be honorable. One of the scholars, I was looking and, and, and watching him, and uh, people of young age were asking him, were telling him um, that we need to be, our family members don't respect us much. We don't have much respect. So he told them to go and do some of the shopping, for example, for the house. Uh, you know, especially say in the Middle East, it's walkable or in cities that are walkable, you can go and get bread. He said, go and bring the bread in the morning or any responsibility you can have at the home or a chore that you give to him. You have this responsibility, go and bring the bread early in the morning for breakfast, fresh bread every day. Then you'll be distinguished because you have responsibility. You're taking part of uh, some of the responsibilities of the house. So if you're going to be a child that's just going to be you know, on their devices all the time, in their room, the room's going to be closed all the time, and you don't help out at, in the house, then you're going to be seen, it's fine, your parents will allow it, but you won't have that same honor and that same being waji as a child that takes some of the responsibilities of the home, some of the chores and does it. So having responsibility, being responsible people. So that's in this world. These are natural things. These are logical things. Thing three is being organized. If you have a certain time you sleep, a certain time you wake up, a certain time we pray, of course, we're organized. You're not late to your meetings. You're not, uh, when someone calls you, you know, you don't forget. You call them back. You're organized. People respect you more. So a lot of the respect we're looking for is coming from ourselves, you know, especially the youth. This day and age, sometimes, you know, they complain. They say, don't listen to me. They don't respect me. Well, that's how you carry yourself, one. Two, your responsibilities that you have. And three, how organized you are. People respect organized people. 
people that are on the time, people that have a program from themselves. You know, uh, four, being good at what you do. See, brothers and sisters, we need to train in, in uh, the way we raise our kids. Teach them skills, and those skills will help them make income, will give them financial stability, and uh, whenever, whenever what profession they choose and they really like that profession, not just a profession because it sounds good, they like the title, but no matter what they choose in, in life, and because we need people to help out, and you can be a wajih, distinguished person in whatever profession you are, but being good at it, and being a good person in it, being ethical and being good at it. You know, say if I'm going to be a, um, someone that's going to be, say, uh, an artist or something, or I'm going to be, for example, a, a speaker, or I'm going to be a researcher, I'm going to be anything that I like. I become good at it. I spend time, I, I watch, I read, I watch videos, and I practice, and then I reach perfection. That is what gives you honor. So you have different um, you know, careers that anyone can choose. But that when someone becomes really good at their career, then they get respected in their field and, and others respect them. The fifth is not to make the same mistake twice. That when you think about um, how to have being distinguished, not to be to making mistakes, say you find a friend and that in our hadith tells us about having friends and testing them. And they failed you a few times. Well, then you need to distance yourself from that friend if they're harming you, not to fall into different mistakes over and over and over. Mu'min is kayyas. You know, he's, he's wise and he's clever. So therefore, he doesn't keep ma making mistakes. This is about the world. These five things and other things you can think of in your mind, that the way we carry ourselves, the, the responsibilities that we have, how organized we are, how good at what we are, and five, where we don't make mistakes. This helps us with this world in being respect, respectable people. But when it comes to Allah, there are a few things I'm going to mention here very briefly. Allah gives darajat, walladina utul ilm darajat. Allah yarfa Allah, He gives rank. He gives, he raises them. يَرْفَعُ اللَّهَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَالَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمِ دَرَجَاتِ Those that have believed and those that are given knowledge, they have been excelled, they have been given darajat. So they have, in the names of, in the, in the sight of Allah, the way that he views someone that has knowledge, especially knowledge of the prophets, knowledge of religion, knowledge of hadith, he has a very high station compared to someone that doesn't have knowledge. So you can be as pious and sincere as you want. That's good. But having knowledge and being a knowledgeable person, that will give you honor in the, in the eyes of God. Two, taqwa. Inna akramakum, inna Allah atqaakum. Islam from 1400 years ago, the Quran, not from what race you have, what nationality you have. Doesn't matter if you're from Ethiopia, from like Balala Habashi. It doesn't matter if you're from Persia, like Salman of Farsi. It doesn't matter what race you belong to. These are all friends of the Rasul. Why? Because they had taqwa. akramakum in Allah The most noble of you in the sight of Allah is the most virtuous, is the most righteous. So when it comes to the sight of Allah, Allah being distinguished when you have knowledge. Two, when you have taqwa, when you have this ability to f fight against sin and guard yourself against sin, guard yourself against wrong action. And very inter interesting, when you have taqwa actually, when you reach this uh, faculty of not making these huge mistakes when it comes to the commands of God, you notice you develop in yourself a faculty that is a tool that you can use in all realms of life. You won't be tempted by Satan anymore. You won't be tempted by the lower desires. You will be successful in all realms of life. You know, so you can imagine a person that has taqwa, that when they take their spiritual skills and put it to their prof professional life, they're on time, they're organized, they're disciplined, 
And when they work, they really work because they're used to um, fighting against the desires. They're used to seeing what is right and following what is right. So they become successful in their careers. They become successful as parents because they don't allow their nafs and their desires anymore to tell them what to do. They train and they raise their children in the best way. And when it comes to the way they raise their spouse, uh, sorry, the way they raise their children, the ways they, that they treat their spouse, they are very compassionate with them. They don't become angry. And if they become angry, they know how to manage it. So therefore, taqwa and having this ability to be uh, righteous is another way that we can become uh, waji. So therefore, not only do we, do we get wajahat from, from uh, the path of Imam Hussein, but he is teaching us. His message is the message of Islam. And he's teaching us this method that if you want to be waji in the eyes of God, to have knowledge and to act upon your knowledge, inshallah. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ahla bayti at-tayyibin at-tahirin.